Alrighty, welcome back to Art Giving Hope. This is Dan Priest, your recovering from a cold host. So I was watching my son's soccer game. It was a while ago, maybe last summer, last spring. And this really cool ball rolled by. I took a picture of it, and um, here we are trying to recreate that simple but cool design. <laughs> so I, I couldn't, it wasn't my ball, so I couldn't just grab it, and I doubt there was anything on it that would identify it by who the designer was. So if you recognize your work, please know you get all the credit. Um, anyway, it's always fun for me to see if I can see something in nature out in the out in the world and see if I can duplicate it in wood and resin. So this was my attempt at that. And other than one fairly major problem, I thought it came off pretty well. So you'll notice that we've had a pretty big change at our YouTube channel and our website and our Facebook group. We are now Art Giving Hope. It used to be Art for OUR. We were initially set up to support Operation Underground Railroad. And if you've watched the news lately, especially if you live in Utah, United States, um, you've probably heard a lot of really um, unsettling things or ha or have been happening, a lot of accusations against Tim Ballard, the founder of Operation Underground Railroad. And as a group over at Art Giving Hope, we decided to change our name to broaden our support for different charities. Um, we are holding off on supporting Operation Underground Railroad till the dust is settled over there and the truth comes out as to what's been happening. So in the meantime, we're still fighting human trafficking. We're supporting organizations that fight against, you name it, um, any of the issues that are like that in the world. So last month, uh, we supported the Tim Tebow Foundation, which helps fight human trafficking in part. And if you go to our Facebook group, uh, under Art Giving Hope. Um, each month you can vote on which charity we're going to support. And this coming month, uh, we're going to support the Elizabeth Smart Foundation that helps fight human trafficking and abuse and things like that. So pretty excited about expanding our horizons and being a little more broad. If there's a charity you would like us to support, if you want to get that name in the running for one of the monthly votes, um, go to our website, drop us a line. We'd love to hear, hear about it. So we usually raise anywhere between two and 4,000 bucks a month. So hopefully it helps these charities along the way. So far since the existence of our charitable group, Art Giving Hope, um, we've been able to raise about 120,000 bucks. Most of it has gone towards fighting ch trafficking, human trafficking around the world. And uh, my pie in the sky hope is to hit a million bucks before I hang up the the tools and stop working in the shop. So we'll see. I'd love your support. But we'll take all the help you can get us. You can go to our website and do your shopping on Amazon. You can buy something. You can donate something if you're an artist. Uh, we've got every medium you can imagine on there. Um, Christmas is coming up. Love to have you do your some of your Christmas shopping there. You can even buy gift cards. There's a lot of ways you can help. The simplest thing you can do is um, watch the YouTube channel, share the videos you see. That's one of our bigger fundraisers, fundraising successes. Period. Um, one of our sponsors is TrueMe. It's uh, smart kid smartphones for kids, and they have taken what Gab did and have gone to the next level and I really like what they've done. We've got a couple of my kids have their phones and helps you protect your kids from all the crazy stuff that happens out on the internet and you can slowly give them more control. Another one of our sponsors is Acmer Laser Engraving. Um, they donated this laser engraver um, for me to use on my channel and show it off. Yeah, this thing's pretty sweet. I have been very happy with it. Learning curve wasn't too steep. So once I had um, 
drawn out this design uh, from the photo I took of that soccer ball that rolled by. Took a picture of it, made it into a JPEG, and then the program we use with the Acmer laser um, turns it into a useful file from them, and here we are. So, pretty slick. It's pretty awesome, actually. It was really fun to mess with this. I suppose I should have had a warning on here. If you're not good with strobe lights and prone to seizures, you might you might not want to watch this. Now my style has been uh, to go out and create stuff, design things. I'm trying to recreate what I see out in the world, and and half the time I, I'll end up naming it after the fact as I'm doing the uh, final stages of processing. It'll hit me what it reminds me of. And this this pro this project was no exception. So there's one or two angles um, you'll see on here. It looks just like the iris um, in an eye, and I love that. It's, I think if you look in, in the eye, a human or cat or dog, whatever, the iris is incredible. If you watch it, a little colored muscle that. Um, is just beautiful as it contracts and contracts and expands to help um, control the amount of light that goes into your eye. It's pretty pretty amazing, miraculous thing. Um, which interestingly has a lot of meaning for me. I um, spent my undergrad doing pre medical classes, one of which was anatomy and physiology, uh, in preparation for med school. And there's a, a very special meaning for me when I was studying the eye. I, I'm a very religious guy, um, very Christian. And I had served a mission for my church. And when I um, got home from my mission, I was going to college. And one of our professors, I think it was Biology 101, actually gets up there and first thing out of his mouth was, I know a lot of you guys here are religious and you believe in God. And by the time you're done with my class, I will have disproven your need for God. And I thought that was pretty brazen. The community I live in is very religious. And I thought, man, only a guy with tenure would dare say that around here, you know. But he did. And he proceeded to spend the next semester trying to do just that. And it was interesting because initially... Um, he actually did plant some s seeds in my, of doubt in my mind about, uh, whether there really was a need for God and, and he was using the, uh, theory of evolution to disprove the need for any creative process, any creative creator, um, greater than nature, mother nature. And, you know, he did, he did get inside my brain there for a while and I was studying one day and I had two or three classes at, at the same time just happened to be studying the eye. So we're talking about physics, anatomy, um, physiology, and it, you know, it's talking about how the eye collects light. The amount of light is controlled by the iris, and then it's focused through a lens, which is flexed and expanded to get a perfect focus of the image, which is then reflected on the back of the retina. And... In, in, interestingly, which is upside down, the retina then collects this light and transforms it into chemical reactions, which are then transformed into nerve pathway reactions, which are transmitted to the brain, which somehow takes this information and creates an image that your conscious mind can appreciate as what's happening. And it does this almost instantaneously. It's the most incredible thing I've ever studied. So I'm studying this, and I've been praying, reading the scriptures, uh, and thinking about this, and wondering about my faith in God. And I had the strongest spiritual experience right about then. It was very simple. I, I felt very strongly at that moment a, a message in my mind, in my heart, that said, uh, you know, Dan, this, 
this is my handiwork. This is my work, my glory. And you don't need to worry about how it happened exactly at this moment. Um, but just know that these are my fingerprints. This is my handiwork. And that was it. And ever since then, my faith in God has grown immensely. And interestingly, it, it didn't compete with my belief in God. My, my understanding, let me, let me rephrase that. My, extent, my understanding of science and the human body and medicine started to merge with my understanding of religion, of Christ, of God, the Father, and so on. And now there's no conflict whatsoever in my mind. Uh, it's amazing. Every time there's some new scientific discovery, I find that it adds to my knowledge of my Heavenly Father and Christ and their plan for us and so on. And uh, so I have I live in peace now. I don't live in fear of the next scientific you know, evolutionary discovery. It, it, it works for me. I, I'm as impressed with a God who can snap his fingers and create Adam and Eve out of dust as I am a God who can snap his fingers and create Adam and Eve through, you know, 14 billion years of the existence of the universe and four or five billion years of existence on earth and evolution, the whole thing doesn't matter to me. Either way, I'm impressed. It's miraculous. And I believe that God is behind it in the end. And that's that's just my personal belief. No need to start an argument here on uh, on my YouTube channel <laughs> about that. But I just wanted you to know that uh, these, these projects often have a lot of meaning to me. And this one, when you look at that one angle, I'll let you discover as you're going through here where it is. Um, the beauty of the human eye, the iris, and what that means to me. So... Uh, another shout out to one of my awesome sponsors. It's uh, Let's Resin. Um, they've donated quite a bit of resin to help my projects along. Now, this is the part where something went wrong with my project. Uh, get the bubbles out of it, so on. And, and I've I do usually do a combination of vacuum chamber treatment for about an hour or so. And then I put it in a pressure pot and let it cure there for a number of days at a very low temperature set inside a little lift up freezer, chest freezer. So I'm controlling pressure, temperature, the whole thing. And usually if you do that, the resin sets up great and no problem because the biggest issues I've had are bubbles and or overheating. And I'm not sure what happened with this project. Now I'll be fair, I have used this resin type before and it worked out just fine. But this project was unique. Um, if you look at all the fins I cut in there and, and the two pieces that I glued together, you can, you can look right through it. So usually you don't want to exceed like four to six inches of resin depth or the, the exothermic reaction of the resin setting up is going to go crazy and everything bubbles and cracks. Well, the truth be known with this project, it really is probably before I trim it down, it's probably eight to 10 inches wide. So in... In total, I probably poured a 10 inch pour by 10 by 12. So that was a lot of resin and maybe it was just too much. Um, I don't know. I'll, I'm going to keep using let's, let's resin and see if it was just a flute because of the type of project or if this resin can't handle that kind of depth. But if you're out there listening and you know for a fact of a resin that you can easily pour 10 inches deep, plus without any problems i would love to hear your thoughts <laughs> because sometimes uh, my projects are just really big um, i've watched a couple of guys out there doing exactly what i'm doing with a freezer refrigerator and doing deep pours and they haven't had issues but their resin i've looked up isn't recommended for anything over four inches like this one so i don't know why it would be any different but there you have it let me know if you got some special thing up your sleeve that's reliable and super deep resin pouring then I would love to hear about it. So because this thing overheated and cracked, there's a lot of bubbles and cracks. Um, I used a different product um, once I got things kind of cleaned up here by Let's Resin. That's a tabletop coat by them, coating resin. And my thought was I'll just coat this thing in a super thick layer. It'll fill in some of these cracks and bubbles and make it look a little more presentable. And it actually worked out great. And I do highly recommend that type of resin 
to create a perfectly clear glossy finish um which was which was great and so that helped it look a little better so fair warning i always sell these products to raise money for the charity work we're doing and this one will come with a more than its fair share of blemishes and cracks um but uh i don't want anyone, anyone to buy it and be surprised by that that's kind of what's coming with this one we'll call it a prototype the iris 1.0 type prototype The other minor change I've made is I got a microphone. <laughs> I, don't, I have a cold, so this may not be the best voice, but let me know if you notice the sound was better than in previous videos. But I thought I'd give this a try. I had a kind soul say, hey man, everything you're doing is great, but your microphone sucks. And I had been using my cell phone <laughs> to record, you know? And maybe it was time to get a little more professional. When I used the um, tabletop resin coating, I let it slowly turn like a little rotisserie on my lathe for most of the night, actually just let it cure. And that's why you get these crazy lumps. And I didn't really care about that. I knew that was going to happen. I was more interested in filling in cracks and bubbles at this point. So before somebody gets on here and goes, what in the heck are you thinking? That's why. I wanted to get it stabilized and filled in those cracks and bubbles before I uh, did the internal hollowing. Uh, I wasn't sure how unstable it was going to be, so this was really just a fill in the cracks measure. I should give a shout out to the makers of this hollowing system. Uh, this is by advancedlathetools.com. That's advancedlathetool.com. They didn't sponsor me or anything. I just bought their system. Um, my friend Thomas Stegel recommended this. And I'm here to tell you, I had the simple hollowing system for a long time. It's that red mechanical arm, which was fine for small projects. But I never do small projects. My projects are heavy and big, and I always do lots of resin, which is often in weird pockets throughout the wood, which makes it very uneven and unsteady and dangerous. And it just beat the living tar out of that simple hollowing system. <laughs> so, so I finally caved and spent the money on this uh, hollowing system by Advanced Lathe Tools. And I'm here to tell you, 
I'd be shocked if you can find something more robust and heavy duty than this thing. It is a beast. The bar alone, I mean, sometimes I struggle to pick it up. I'm not a big guy, but it's got to be 60, 70 pounds. Um, just the weight of it, the mass of it, uh, it makes the whole thing very stable. But they figured out how to do a, an entrapment bar there that helps steady it so it's easy to use once you get it in place. Um, but super heavy and stable. It's like the best thing ever. That's saved me all kinds of heartache um, when I'm deep into these bowls and trying not to kill myself. So shout out to those folks. Well done. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the rest of this video. Um, come check us out at Art Giving Hope. We would love to see your donations, love to see you purchase stuff. If you've got ideas for us to help us raise more money to help fight human trafficking and abuse around the world, we'd love to hear it. Um, hope you guys have a Merry Christmas. If I don't get another project out before then, and uh, have a wonderful day. See you on the flip side.